good morning everyone i hope i'm audible yes you are audible okay so welcome everyone for uh, 102nd webinar manage uh, ci saturday webinar series for uh, agri startup ecosystem today we are going to have uh, presentations from the identified eminent resource persons from the industry on the topic agro processing industries in india growth status and prospects manage is a national institute of agriculture and extension management under the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare so we are doing these webinar series on every saturday to help the farmers entrepreneurs innovators who are part of this agri startup ecosystem now i request zinath to introduce the speakers of today's session thank you praveen uh, our first speaker for the day is uh, dr sudanshu uh, he is the secretary at apida agriculture and Produ process food product export development authority uh, he has been associated with the body for the last 32 years uh, i see dr sudanshu is here uh, sir uh, can you hear us yeah good morning i am able to hear you all right all right so so over to you you can start the session Uh, I request all the attendees to use chat box to address their question to the speakers. We'll be taking up all these questions during our Q and A round. Over to you, sir. Uh, the sequence of the presentation will be Dr. Sudanshu sir is going to uh, talk initially, like uh, from eleven five to eleven twenty, followed by uh, Mr. Harsha Vardhan, then uh, Mr. Sushil Shekhle. At the end, we will take uh, Q and A sessions from the participants. So, should I start? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, esteemed uh, panelists and the uh, participants uh, at uh, this uh, important webinar, and uh, good morning to all of you. And uh, I think this is uh, one of the uh, good initiative uh, taken by Manage to sensitize the uh, uh, concerned stakeholders in the value chain of. Uh, agri production processing and uh, exports and uh, i would like to thank manage first uh, to invite apida in this program and uh, with regard to the topic of the program um, we all know that uh, india is an agrarian economy and uh, we have a, a large base uh, rather a sound base in the agriculture sector and the country is uh, capable of uh, growing all kind of produce due to its varied agro climatic zone and uh, which means that uh, we are able to uh, produce uh, all the uh, agriculture produce including horticulture including floriculture also in terms of fruits and vegetable we all know that india stands uh, either number 1 number 2 number 3 in number of uh, fruits and vegetable and uh, we are of the opinion that uh, encouraging agri processing uh, becomes of paramount importance uh, uh, because it connects the uh, agriculture uh, sector either the farmer or the processor with the industry segment and uh, worldwide if we see uh, the uh, trend shows that the countries who were able to uh, uh, set up a sound base uh, food processing industry uh, there uh, the food processing sector has affected the economy to a large extent and the country like india where we have the abundant raw material in terms of all the whether it is of uh, fruits and vegetable or the uh, cereal based uh, the product the raw material is there so now the question comes when we have the raw material why we are not able to a process and uh, uh, make the finished product and uh, uh, not only supply to the domestic market but to the global market also so the the efforts are being made and from the government side uh, the uh, dedicated line ministries have been set up uh, to look after their domain for example ministry of agriculture uh, farmers and welfare look after the production aspect of uh, the agriculture produce Uh, ministry of uh, food processing which is uh, basically their mandate is to uh, organize the supply chain of production of uh, processed food products animal husbandry basically ministry of uh, fisheries and animal husbandry is there which take care of because we have sound uh, base in the animal husbandry sector also fishery also 
so uh, these line ministries are uh, uh, continuously making efforts here through, through their schemes and uh, other activities uh, for uh, encouraging the value addition uh, in this uh, particular sector. And there are concerned organizations uh, under these uh, line ministries uh, dedicated for the uh, specific products. For example, in Mandar Ministry of Agriculture, there are dedicated research uh, R&D organization. For example, the NRCs, number of NRCs that are there, National Research Center for various potential products, like if we say it is for grapes, NRC grapes, which is in Pune, or pomegranate, it is in Sholapur, and uh, for uh, banana, it is in Trichy. So number of uh, products. The idea is to that these R&D institutions uh, take care of the uh, the requirement of uh, the uh, increasing in the uh, yield or productivity, uh, developing new varieties, taking care of the varieties if the uh, varieties needs to be changed for importing the varieties. And uh, similarly, in the case of uh, Ministry of Food Processing, the dedicated organization like NIFTEM is there and uh, IIFPT in Tanjabur, the organizations are there. Similarly, in the case of Ministry of Animal Husbandry, also the dedicated organization for uh, buffalo meat is there, which is an RC for meat. For poultry, uh, the organization is there. So the under the concerned line ministry, the, the R&D organizations have been set up to uh, take care of uh, the uh, uh, R&D needs uh, of the particular sector. As far as the PIDA is concerned, the mandate of the organization to uh, promote agri exports from the country and the PIDA looks after uh, more than 50% uh, of the uh, agri exports, uh, looks after uh, 700 plus HS codes, 700 uh, plus tariff lines, and uh, the products looked after by a PIDA are just for the, the, the uh, knowledge of the participant, I want to touch upon this, uh, what is the mandate of a PIDA? The uh, products looked after uh, are majorly in the category of fresh fruits and vegetable, uh, which we say fresh horticulture, including uh, floriculture, uh, herbal and medicinal plants also. In the case of processed food, we have divided into two categories. One, the uh, products uh, prepared from uh, fruits and vegetable. This is uh, processed fruits and vegetable, uh, which has mainly the fruit pulp, uh, the uh, preserved and uh, dehydrated vegetables, the frozen uh, fruits and vegetables, this comes under this uh, subcomponent. Then the other processed food, which is basically guar gum, ground nut, cereal preparations, alcoholic beverages, all the range of products uh, other than fruits and vegetables come under that category. And APIDA uh, gives uh, um, uh, sufficient focus on uh, encouraging the value addition process. Uh, we provide uh, the support through our financial assistance scheme for setting up of infrastructure for uh, strengthening the quality aspect in the supply chain of production, then connecting to the global market. <clears throat> so uh, we uh, very well understand the importance of uh, uh, encouraging the agri-processing. And uh, uh, Government of India announced agri-export policy in December 2018. And the idea was to uh, provide support and encourage all the state governments uh, to um, organize the supply chain of production, processing, and uh, marketing. And under this, uh, the clusters have been notified. The production cluster, incidentally, our country is blessed with uh, the production clusters. Production cluster, if we say, uh, for mangoes, we have the production cluster in case of processing variety. Uh, we uh, India is a leading uh, exporter of uh, uh, mango pulp. So we have the production cluster in Chittur, uh, in Andhra Pradesh, uh, then in uh, Prashnagiri in Tamil Nadu, Kokan region, which is basically for Alfonso variety of mangoes. Similarly, in case of dehydrated onion, Bhavnagar is an area in the Gujarat. Bhavnagar is a district where roughly more than 50 processing units of uh, dehydrated units are there. Gherkins is also one of the example in Bangalore, which is one of the organized industry there in Bangalore. So number of production clusters are there. So uh, when we uh, talk about the agri-processing and we are able to identify the clusters, it becomes easier for all the stakeholders to make efforts for organizing the supply chain in terms of first identification of requirement for creation of necessary infrastructure. Infrastructure in terms of uh, pack houses, 
in terms of uh, processing units, in terms of storage, in terms of strengthening the logistics part also. Uh, when we have a processing unit in a rural part of the country, the logistics supply chain means connecting it from the processing unit up to the exit port or up to the, uh, the domestic markets uh, where the produce was to be basically uh, produce has to reach uh, for which reefer vans are required, proper transportation is required, proper roads are required so, the, so that the produce reaches ultimately to the end consumer in a proper shape. So, uh, with, with, with the um, uh, notification of clusters under agri-export policy, the state government have been guided to prepare a state uh, agri-export plan so that they have a blueprint in front of them that in their state, which are the potential product A, B, what needs to be done in terms of uh, organizing their supply chain, and third, how they can be connected uh, for the domestic market and to the exports. Agri-export policy per se uh, focuses on agri-export part. So, APIDA has uh, taken number of initiatives even the, during the COVID period also, where the, uh, the, uh, the uh, despite the disruptions in the supply chain, uh, we were able to connect uh, number of agri produce to the global market in the retail chains of the global market. And uh, we have been focusing on new product also. One side, there are traditional product. Second side, there are new products which has potential, but uh, they were not having the visibility in the global market. And post COVID, when the uh, people are becoming health cautious, so there is a shift uh, which APIDA has uh, tried to encourage going for the uh, nutritious product, the product like Moringa, the product like spirulina, the product like uh, millets, makhana, number of product, and we are in a process of uh, identification of products which can be brought under the category of superfoods so that uh, India can have a branding in the international market that uh, uh, India is a, a reliable supplier of uh, the health uh, nutritious pro uh, the produce to the uh, global market. So uh, with this, I would not let, like to take much time. I would like to conclude my remarks. And uh, while the question answer session, I will definitely like to uh, respond to the queries of the participant. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Um, we will have uh, question and answer session for Sudhan sir. Now quickly, we can have your questions, sir. Uh, sir, some of the important aspects uh, you have covered, especially related to uh, the value addition process of uh, uh, agro uh, products. Can you be a bit more loud? Yes. So, uh, sir, actually, you said that um, APIDA is uh, supporting in, uh, with respect to infrastructure and supply chain uh, related uh, challenges. So, uh, are there any specific uh, schemes or any training programs given to these uh, business people or entrepreneurs who are involved in this? Any funding or any specific training is given from APIDA, sir? Yeah, APIDA provides financial assistance under its uh, uh, scheme for infrastructure development for creation of infrastructure or um, uh, wherever the funding support is for upgradation or uh, there is a scheme component for missing gap, which is for the processed food industry. So in uh, under this scheme component, uh, for example, someone has to set up a pack house, pack house for fresh horticulture produce. So, um, uh, this is 50% of the total cost subject to a ceiling limit of rupees 2 crore. But in the, for the first time, in the case of landlocked areas, landlocked areas or the Himalayan terrains, the assistance is up to 75% of the total cost subject to a ceiling of uh, 2 crore. The idea was this because the landlocked states suffer due to the, the logistic constraints because these landlocked states do not have the port facilities in terms of seaport or in terms of proper international airport. So this is scheme component. We got it introduced uh, for this. Number two, in the processing food, uh, the, the processed food sector, because the assistance is already provided by Ministry of Food Processing Industries under their different scheme, PMFME, Pradhan Mantri, Kisan Sampada, Yojana, number of schemes are there. So uh, uh, we basically highlighted to the government that uh, for export-oriented production, in a processing unit, the latest kind of technology or equipments are required. Equipments like in terms of Sortex machine or the X-ray or the scanner 
or the there are some equipment which basically affects the uh, productivity affects the uh, or improves the food safety aspect of the product there also we introduced a component and that is again 50% of the total cost uh, for the non uh, landlocked states 75% for the landlocked states for the purchase of reefer van also because reefer the the maintaining the cold chain uh, the reefer vans are required by the industry so for that also um, the entrepreneurs or the processors can purchase the, the fleet of reefer van but subject to a ceiling limit of 2 crore only so these are the the financial assistance provided by apiga <laughs> thank you uh, we have one participant who has raised his hand mr jitendra kumar uh, jitendra kumar sir you can unmute yourself and ask questions to sir mr jitendra kumar can you unmute yourself we are doing it okay yeah mr jitendra kumar please go ahead jai rasi leta is in the bond yeah aa hai apna okay i think uh, we can take the next participant uh, mr gautam can you unmute yourself and ask questions to sir yes sir Firstly, yeah, please let me thank manage i mean i've been following your webinars for the last entire year it's a really beautiful and all, wonderful webinars that you are doing i guess you are one of the best in the country today i mean i i am from a rkv raftar background so i can tell you you are one of the best programs which is going on in the country thank you so much uh, my question to sir is that uh, uh when we are uh, looking uh, for i mean uh, agro processing in terms of sir mentioned moringa and so there likewise there are many other uh, fruits and vegetables which can be dehydrated and they have got a very good export potential plus millet products because i am asking this because i have done a course on millets from iimmr hyderabad so for this what kind of financial assistance can we expect from uh, apeda number 1 number 2 from this is for manage number two question is that what other government schemes are available sir from apida and from government thank you should i respond yes sir please go ahead sir um we all know that um, uh, next year uh, this international year of millets is uh, being uh, organized and in the last uh, two to three years period sufficient amount of sensitization has happened and uh, we are always glad to see the kind of value added millet products are coming in the market uh, i was there in the annapurna food which was in mumbai uh, day for yesterday there was a program in uh, delhi also which was in greater noida so large range of this millet products has come and i am really uh, Uh, happy to know that uh, you have undergone a course under uh, IIMR. Uh, two years back, Apida awarded a project uh, for uh, strengthening the this millet sector for introducing uh, value-added products of millets. So uh, Apida is already working with Indian Institute of Millet Research, and uh, in the, in the coming days to come, uh, we will be uh, coming up with the uh, new kind of products which can be developed. and uh, with regard to financial assistance the financial assistance of apida which are uh, available for all other products is applicable for uh, millets also so for example if you have a processing unit you want to purchase an equipment under the you can apply for uh, uh, this under the component of missing gaps and avail the assistance up to 2 crores uh, 50% of the total project cost and uh, or if it is the uh, area is land locked it will be 75% similarly in the case of uh, uh, quality development school is team also uh, for setting up of a in house laboratory uh, for that financial assistance is uh, applicable which can be availed or the the processing unit want to go for a certification for example iso or hisap or any uh, food safety certification for that financial assistance is also applicable and the guidelines of all these financial assistance is available at apida website uh, which can be accessed in case of any problem 
the uh, email can be either sent to head office or we have our regional offices also. For example, in Hyderabad, uh, Hyderabad, we have a regional office, we have a regional office in Chennai, we have a regional office in Bangalore, Mumbai, we have the regional office, we APIDA has 12 regional offices. So the concerned regional office can be contacted and they will facilitate uh, in terms of guiding about the financial assistance and also other support required for connecting to the global market. Sir, we have yeah, Dr. Sudhan, Sudhan, sir, very nice to see you, sir. I am uh, Dr. Saravanan Raj. I am from Manage. I am Director for Agriculture Extension. And uh, for second question he put for the Manage, that's why I thought of intervening in between. Uh, what are the government uh, uh, programs or schemes like that? Uh, Mr. Gautam Tanekar, it is even RKV Rapta. Recently, there is a ministry given order for just before 2023 international year, another 100 startups will be funded. Uh, regularly, we are funding, Government of India is funding from Ministry of Agriculture, large number of startups. You might be, uh, you are linked with uh, RKV Rapta scheme in IIMR also, then you might be knowing. But recently, we got another, within this uh, short period, another 100 startups will be supported, even processing, even having the their own machineries, even support for export, all things are there. Apart from that, Government of India coming with large number of array of schemes to promote the millet. Even uh, the large number of schemes already announced it is available online, or we will get you with the re remaining schemes and how we can get the benefit also. We will keep in touch and we will post you more information also. Thank you very much. Yeah. Pravini, go ahead. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, we have uh, one more question from one of the participants. Mr. Vipin Singh is asking how to start processing unit for horticulture producers or controlled uh, packing. So, that's sir, this question is for uh, Please come again because uh, I think some problem is at my end, uh, the voice is low. So, okay. uh, can, can, you, can you repeat the question? <laughs> yeah, the question is from Mr. Vipin Singh, sir is asking how to start processing unit for horticulture producers or control packaging. Control? Packaging. Control packaging. So it's a, it's a good question. Uh, when we talk about uh, the processing unit for uh, horticulture produce, so the processing is basically under three categories, broadly we say. It's primary processing, secondary processing, and tertiary processing. So the entrepreneur will have to decide what up to what level they want to go for. For example, primary processing, they want to just uh, send the uh, or deal in the uh, horticulture produce, properly packing them. Uh, first, uh, first stage is sorting, grading, cleaning, and properly packaging. That can be done. For that purpose, basically, uh, the uh, pack houses are there. Uh, the entrepreneurs can see the pack house, make a plan for set up a pack house. For the secondary processing for making pulp, puree, concentrate, they can set up a processing unit because there is a large demand for uh, the pulp, puree, or the ingredient parts. So that can be done. Coming to the third tertiary level for going for a, for the juices or the end final finished product. So uh, uh, up to that, the entrepreneur can plan. They will have to decide uh, what kind of investment they can go in for and how they can manage uh, the, the marketing aspect also, because if, the, if they have to deal in the finished product, they will have to uh, strengthen their marketing system also. They will have to define the target audience so that they are able to market their product. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, remaining questions we can take after other uh, speaker sessions, you know? so we can uh, invite the next speaker to take the presentation. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Sudhanshu. Uh, now we move on to our next speaker for the day, Mr. H.G. Harshwardhan. He's the founder of Lavin Agro Processing Industry. Uh, BCom graduate who started his entrepreneurship journey way back in 2012. And in the year 2019, he started uh, Karnataka based Lavin Agro Processing Industries. Uh, their startup is into manufacturing of dehydrated fruits, vegetables, and spices. Over to you, Mr. Harshwardhan. You can uh, start. And uh, requesting all the attendees again to post their question in the chat box so that we take them up during our Q&A round. Yeah. yeah hello. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, manage, thanks to InManage and thanks to Dr. Sarvan and Raj. Um, we have started our uh, production unit in uh, 2019. 
and uh, uh, we have mainly hello are you listening yes, yeah yeah yeah, uh, 2019, we have started our uh, company, Live and Agro Processing Industries, and by investing around around 50 lakh rupees. Uh, we have applied uh, in uh, PM MG, PM EGP scheme, and uh, we got a benefited uh, subsidy. And um, uh, our uh, we have uh, mainly concentrated on uh, dehydration uh, processing, like uh, dehydrating uh, fruits, vegetables, and herbs. Our, uh, our main product is uh, pineapple, uh, dried pineapple, dried banana, dried ginger, and uh, dried uh, like curry leaves and all. Yeah, well, we uh, we got the trainings from uh, training in uh, CFTR uh, Institute, but uh, we have developed own our technology uh, to face the challenges in the market. Like uh, while you taking the technology, um, you have to make sure that uh, these technologies uh, will be the commercially feasible uh, because the cost uh, and your uh, quality, your the uh, output is uh, very good. Your quality is very good, but the um, uh, in the market these qualities won't run. Uh, if it is say the cost is high, your cost is high. And you are selling price also high, uh, but uh, while uh, uh, taking the uh, technology, so we make sure that these technologies gives us a very low, low cost production and uh, feasible for in all market uh, like uh, uh, online market shops, uh, chain supermarkets, bulk traders, buyers, repackers. These for these all for these all buyers. Uh, um we can sell it for it for we can sell these uh, buyers for e all these buyers because um only the cost uh, only the hello yeah audible sir it depends on it yeah these uh, the these buyers uh, look for the uh, very low cost uh, and uh, uh, good quality product so we uh, we need to uh, main we need hello yes sir can yes, you go ahead yes, sir. Yes, sir. you can go ahead I'm... we are hearing you are yeah. you can switch off your camera in case it's a problem and you can uh, go ahead hello Yes, sir. You're audible. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, might be a uh, signal problem. Yeah, um, choosing the technology is a very much important step in the uh, agri processing. Like uh, your technology gives you the low cost uh, output and uh, gives the best quality. So we um, we need to go for those technologies uh, uh, to give give us the. <laughs> Uh, is there? Yeah, hello. Yes, sir, please go on. Yeah. Um, so we can take some questions uh, in between. Uh, some connectivity issue, I believe. Uh, actually, uh, he was uh, talking about um, uh, choosing the right technology, uh, definitely, which will help the uh, manufacturers or the processors to go ahead with the low cost and the best quality right so uh, in in this uh, scenario there are so many uh, entrepreneurs who have an idea but uh, they may not be able to choose the appropriate technology so what are some of the factors uh, that uh, other than the cost and the quality what are some of the other yeah. factors we need yeah. to consider sir? hello hi hello uh, yes, yes can hear you sir yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, the technology uh, I'm talking about, um, the choosing the technology is the very uh, important step in while uh, starting the business, because a uh, few organization like uh, uh, go organ government and non-government organization gives the technology, which they don't uh, have the right uh, knowledge about the 
this market uh, calculation like uh, cost and uh, selling price so um, uh, few government technologies uh, government organizations gives the best technology like uh, best quality output uh, you will get it but uh, this quality uh, will not run in the market so we have to buy the before going the uh, starting the unit processing um, we need to check the um, this quality is running in the market or not so that we uh, understand that uh, what is the uh, uh, process what is the uh, uh, what is the product we have to uh, process we have to manufacture and what is the um, cost and selling this call is all the knowledge we will get it and uh, i suggest that um, uh, uh, finding the own technology is the uh, best because we have we, uh, our product is if unique then we can uh, uh, more chance of getting the orders uh, like sales uh, uh, in the market so uh, along with that uh, unique product we have to go for the um, uh go with the market uh, quality so that uh, we will get the cash flow and initial stage uh, all the startups need the cash flow so that is the uh, very much important that um, go with the market quality and also uh, in agriculture based uh, production in it uh, we had to find the seasons so that uh, uh, in a year there is two times uh, off seasons are there one is uh, um, uh, the raw material shortage and another one is uh, market itself have the uh, um, uh, sales market itself as the sales will not be there in the market like so many reasons so many other reasons which you cannot uh, identify uh, so these kind of uh, off seasons we have to uh, look into it and uh, uh, in a year, at least five to six month off seasons will be there in this agriculture industries, uh, agriculture related industries, so that we have to uh, uh, calculate these uh, challenges and uh, uh, we have to end, uh, we have to start it. Uh, and the raw, mater raw material is uh, choosing the raw material itself is the uh, uh, biggest challenge in the uh, agriculture based industries. So uh, make it sure uh, that uh, uh, you, you will get the raw material in uh, all the seasons or uh, at least uh, you will get uh, six months in the year so that uh, you, you, run, uh, uh, you run at least nine months in a year. So uh, or you have to manage that uh, off seasons. So uh, you can add uh, some other products which can uh, run throughout the year. And um, um, another one challenging is uh, credit and operation uh, credit and op uh, operating working capital. Like uh, um, uh, we have to put it in uh, around 30 to 45 days credit. All the all the uh, shop shops or uh, uh, the buyers, uh, the big buyers, the traders, who at least they uh, demanding 30 45 days uh, credit. So that um, in these 45 days uh, we had to uh, uh, run the uh, manufacturing unit, uh, investing the raw material, uh, salaries, and all the expenses. So um, we had to calculate these uh, expenses and. Uh, uh, we have to make sure that all the uh, initial stage uh, funds are uh, uh, getting uh, um, means. So uh, we have to make sure that uh, we have the funds and uh, and uh, uh, in the off seasons also in the in the well while starting after six months uh, there is a sudden two months gap, three months gaps will be there like uh, raw raw material shortage. Those three months we have to uh, uh, plan make we plan that. Uh, uh smooth running like uh, adding some other products or anything so we have uh these uh, the our manufacturing unit should have the capacity of uh, uh, manufacturing multiple products and uh, uh we uh, make it sure that uh, our competitors like uh, um for uh, like imported products uh, or main comp for agriculture products main competitor is the imported products 
so these imported products are um, have the uh, best um, uh, they have the you uh, know low cost and uh, uh, best quality and they have the uh, best shelf life due to their technology they will uh, uh, these they will manufacture uh, like uh, lowest cost and uh, lowest cost and best quality and shelf life so we have to make sure that um, our pro our product uh, should compete with these uh, uh, imported products okay, thank you sir uh, thanks uh, yeah, uh, so thanks so much uh, for sorry for the inconvenience. So it's an under issue. Yes. Just to summarize uh, what you told for the attendees so that I can ask relevant questions to you. Uh, so yeah. Mr. Harshavardhana stressed upon choosing the right technology, that is especially that uh, was for low cost and best quality. And we need to check for the market demand, then uh, uh, check for the appropriate uh, technology to adapt. And uh, since this yes. uh, business is uh, dependent on uh, uh, seasonal uh, uh, changes and also uh, getting the raw materials on time, uh, so we need to make sure that our production unit doesn't uh, uh, become idle. So we need to uh, have a proper production planning. And also uh, credit and working capital management is the uh, biggest challenge for the people who are working in this industry. And uh, yes. we also specifically talked about the competitors, especially the uh, products that are being imported from uh, other countries where the shelf life is more than the technology they adapt is more the competitors uh, uh, strategies are also really good marketing strategy so now uh, we will uh, move on to uh, mr sushil uh, who will uh, share his experiences uh, knowledge about the agro processing industry sushil over to you uh, good morning can i have the sharing please yes uh, we'll make it present here uh, i'll just give a brief profile to our attendees uh, Mr. Shashi. Uh, can you repeat again, Zina? Uh, sir, can you hear me? Sir, can you hear me? Ravin, we can hear you, not the gene. Kindly introduce uh, Susil and let him start. Yeah. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thanks. Right. So, uh, Mr. Susil uh, Shekli, uh, he is uh, from uh, Maharashtra. He is into uh, this agriculture and allied sectors activities since uh, 2002. Uh, so they have uh, firms uh, like Sushil Agro Firm. With that, they are uh, uh, taking care of uh, agro processing related uh, uh, services, and they are also part of our uh, RK or uh, project at uh, Minus CIA. Uh, sir, over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Today I will be sharing my experience and introduce my venture Agri Food Tech Private Limited, post harvest technology innovation that offers value addition and faster processing of rhizomes from fresh to finished in 24 hours. I'm Sushil Shelke, the co-founder. Thanks for the opportunity to present in front of the members of agriculture ecosystem on agro-processing industries in India growth status and prospects. So uh, the problem that we are solving is a multifold problem. Uh, Post-harvest crop, crop losses for rhizomes is an astounding 7.3%. 1350,000 metric tons, uh, 80 billion rupees. So out of the total global uh, food produced, uh, one third of it is lost and 45% of this is uh, mainly tubers. Secondly, uh, rhizomes such as turmeric, ginger, the primary processing needs to be done by the farmers and requires 30 days of sun drying. During peak harvest, one, one witnesses many unannounced rainfalls, which threaten the open layered produce uh, from damages. The procedure requires to layer and collect several times, making it tedious, cumbersome, and labor intensive. Traditionally, processing yields inferior process, inferior products and products on account of unhygienic treatment and non standard procedures. There is also a risk of adulteration involved when the end product reaches the end consumer. So to 
uh, after a study of all this in association with an agricultural university, we designed then uh, proprietary technology, special designed equipments for dehydration of fresh rhizomes to quality consumer powder products. So uh, our process consists of a bioreactor, vacuum evaporate system and cabinet air dryers to arrive at dehydrated rhizomes. What the process offers is uh, total quality control as it is a complete in-house processing and hence uh, the end products are superior with uh, minimal contamination, uh, hygienic products being offered. The uh, process is standardized. Uh, there is uniform cooking at control temperatures. So we have seen better bioactive elements retention. For instance, we have seen uh, 4% curcumin uh, retention in turmeric uh, Salem variety against the traditional 2%. And also the uh, the shelf life is improved as it is a uniformly cooked uh, product maintained at a stable moisture content level. And uh, the USP of all this is uh, the finished goods are ready in 24 hours against 30 days. So uh, you get higher volumes. Just a comparative uh, study of all the primary processing solutions available in the market. So uh, uh, the other alternatives as of now are the sunrise slices, solar dryers. So uh, the sunrise slices have a lower shelf life uh, due to uh, the microbial activity, uncontrolled microbial activity. And the solar dryers uh, are a better alternative, but they are currently scale inefficient. Our technology comparatively cost higher uh, due to the raw material SS304 needed to qualify for the most stringent finished good export norms. So just an uh, example of what we do different. It's a total in-house process. Uh, the dehydrated rhizomes uh, on your right. So these are air dried. Uh, they have uniform color, cooked at uniform temperatures, complete in-house operations and makes cooking easy. So uh, we are now offering this technology to farmer producer organizations. Uh, we provide the infrastructure consultation as well as the marketing consultation. So we have gone through uh, the various sets of uh, marketing into B2B, B2C and D2C. We have our own brand, Shimneri Masale. And uh, uh, any project that comes up using our technology, uh, we will be offering uh, our consultancy services in the marketing uh, market linkages also. So the project consultation that we provide is uh, we do the vendor selection, installation and commencement operation supervision, uh, charging percentage of the project cost and the marketing linkage consultation, again, charging percentage of the invoice value. So currently we are looking for farmer producer organizations who are looking for projects and value addition, uh, mainly in the regions of Maharashtra, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. Uh, currently we are concentrating on turmeric and ginger. So the total market size is about 8,000 crores, uh, including the farmers, cooperatives, as well as the food manufacturers. Uh, but the market that we are targeting, a serviceable, operational market is 1580 crores. So we have 18 FPOs who have shown interest in this technology. Uh, we are planning a demo days in the year 2023, where live environment demos will be shown to the farmers groups. Uh, we have sold uh, this new to the world, uh, new to the market uh, products, turmeric slices to 10 states and 29 B2B buyers. Uh, we have launched our own brand in regional market. Uh, and the MVP is operational since 2018. There are 168 farmers who are supplying the produce to the MVP. Uh, primary processing initially uh, needs to be done by the farmers and uh, to overcome this practice was a bit of a challenge. Uh, I'll be covering that a little later. And the end products meeting the claims of uh, moisture retention, uh, curcumin retention, uh, just a lab report to support this thing. So our team comprises of uh, uh, four founders and uh, we have Dr. Sanjay Boyar, who is the scientific advisor. And we have three other advisors who are from the sugar industries who help in the projects 
on the test uh, on the technical aspect. So some of our achievements, we are winner of the Agri India Hackathon uh, 2021 organized by Pusa Krishi. We are recognized by Agni uh, in West India. And we are proudly uh, incubated at managed under the RKBY Rafa program. So some of the benefits of this technology are uh, our business model promotes farmers community in their entrepreneurial journey. Uh, both offerings we support system from setting up the processing unit as a MSME micro small industry uh, from the production up to the marketing and the sales. So an FPO usually consists of 100 plus farmers and uh, the 80 lakh rhizome farmers in these three shapes. So they are currently undergoing unknown losses 10 to 20 percent and this technology helps them to overcome the same as well as uh, uh, make value added products and uh, and help them to also sell the value added products. So the environmental impact. Uh, so we are saving 80% on the water uh, in comparison to the uh, traditional methoding uh, method as well as 5% on the relative weight of the biomass. So these are some of our engagements with the farming community. So uh, manage we are uh, RKVY Raftar cohort four member. Uh, we have been able to do a special program with uh, KVK Hingoli. Uh, we have supplied, uh, so there are farmers in and around Marathwada regions who are supplying the fresh produce to the, uh, to the MVP. Uh, another event that we did in association with Agni, uh, with Lakadong uh, Turmeric Group and an engagement with uh, with the Barangal farmers community. So challenges are journey. Uh, so believe uh, we started on this idea in 2015. Uh, uh, how to execute was a challenge because uh, in theory everything was available. The product looked fantastic, but uh, to bring it to life uh, took a lot of challenges. So uh, engineering uh, part, uh, we fortunately could get good vendors and uh, a flexible mindset helped us in the various refinements uh, to the MVP, still working upon improving efficiency and getting more byproducts from the same. So procurement, uh, uh, our region uh, location strategy helped us a lot. Since uh, if you would have gone, if you would have gone in the uh, regions that would have been uh, uh, turmeric uh, ex extensive regions, uh, there the traditional machineries are circulated, and uh, the farmer has the mindset of primary processing. So explaining him to sell off the fresh produce would have been a bigger challenge. So. Our region, the Marathwada Belt, had a significant amount of farmers who were growing the uh, crop and also the unavailability of the uh, traditional processing uh, uh, vendors helped us to uh, gain uh, the fresh produce from the farmers. So uh, financial planning, uh, anything, any new technology that comes to the banks, uh, they take it under a very deep scrutiny. We got rejected 11 times. Uh, we had some issues with the subsidies also, but from then uh, to these four five years, we are now a bankable project. Uh, also, we have secured seed funding under the RKBY uh, program. So marketing, uh, so the learning is on uh, how to uh, how to do an educational marketing campaign for food products. Uh, and marketing of the innovation. So when a new product comes into the market, uh, uh, you need to really segment it better. Uh, we went into the regional markets first, and uh, then we decided to go into the niche markets. So uh, when you are doing your project, you need to have a very clear uh, marketing and the uh, sales person in place. Uh, risk mitigation, uh, we, need, we uh, we need to plan better in terms of adversities in the supply chain and unannounced situations such as the COVID pandemic. Uh, 
so our uh, model uh, requires the farmers to bring the fresh produce uh, to the mvp uh, the factory at aurangabad and uh, farmers from uh, about 60 kilometers bring in the fresh produce and uh, the disruptions that took place in the covid uh, did hamper and uh, uh, lead to a little uh, uh, distaste with the farmers so uh, we need to plan better with the supply chain irregularities so that will be all from my side uh, thank you manage for the opportunity thanks for the insightful presentation uh, now we will uh, move on for this uh, q&a session so uh, i will read out some of the questions asked by our attendees in the chat box and some are sent in the youtube live link uh, so there is a question from uh, mahima joshi uh, she is asking a question for uh, Mr. Sushil. So she is asking, sir, uh, can you share the price of the technology and share more information on how would an FBO be able to buy? Are they providing some sort of financial access? So uh, the technology costs 110 lakhs, uh, the machine uh, infrastructure part. And uh, yes, we can uh, look into uh, uh, various schemes under MOFPI. Uh, there's the agriculture uh, infrastructure scheme. Under that also, they can be eligible. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have another question from uh, uh, Chiti Ji Thakur. Uh, this question is for Dr. Sudanshu, sir. Uh, actually, uh, Chiti Ji is a part of a startup firm called AgroGray. Uh, they are an agrotech uh, startup working in artificial intelligence powered grading, sorting, and packing machines for fruits and vegetables. Uh, they are setting up uh, pack houses that can be used by small and medium scale exporters on uh, per consignment basis. So they are asking, can we avail any support from Apida? Shudan Chishan, uh, yeah, uh, uh, su support for basically the setting up a pack house, or I, I, the, the question was not clear. Uh, so they are setting up uh, pack houses that are used by small and medium scale exporters on a consignment basis. So they are uh -huh. asking, is there any support from Apida for uh, these setting up pack houses? Uh, Apida pack houses, uh, this financial assistance is applicable for the member exporters. So uh, if the entrepreneur is an exporter, they can avail the financial assistance. But in case of service provider, it is uh, not applicable. Um, APIDA also set up the common infrastructure facility with the common pack houses, but that financial assistance is provided to either state government agencies or the central government agency. For example, example we have set up common pack house in uh, Tirupati, uh, Tirupati and uh, Nuzbid and a uh, number of places in southern part of the country, even uh, in the Maharashtra, Gujarat, uh, we have set up the common facility and the idea is that the small and medium exporter who cannot afford to set up such kind of infrastructure, at least they can use that. Okay, sir, okay, thank you. Sir, uh, another important challenge for uh, the startups or the businesses uh, who are involved in uh, this uh, agro processing industry is the packaging part. So if they don't have uh, packaging, definitely they will be having issues with the shelf life of the product also. So is there any specific uh, scheme that supports the entrepreneurs or the businesses involved in uh, this agro processing industries specifically for packaging part? Uh, earlier under a PDI scheme, the component for packaging development was there for individual exporters. But it was discontinued uh, because uh, due to the funding limitation. And uh, but APIDA has got developed packaging standards for all potential fresh produce, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, and uh, the processed food like dehydrated products, IQ of products. So the packaging standards are available at APIDA website. And uh, there is an institute called uh, Indian Institute of Packaging under Ministry of Commerce. Whenever there is a the requirement informed by the trade that the packaging standard for a particular product is not available, we are taking up with them. We are funding that uh, development, the project for development of packaging standard. For example, Kiwi, we got the uh, request from the state government of Arunachal Pradesh that they want the uh, packaging standard to be developed for Kiwi. We awarded a project to Indian Institute of Packaging. So this way we try to support the industry. 
but not for the individual exporters. Okay, sir. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Uh, we have a couple of participants who have uh, raised their hands. Um, Ms. Anusha Priya, are you available? Can you ask question? Anusha Priya, can you unmute yourself and ask the question to the speaker? We're okay, doing it. Hello. Hello. Yes, madam, we can hear you. You can ask the question. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Actually, uh, we have started a pulses processing unit last year. Uh, and then we are going to, I mean, um, um, uh, like hire this one, I mean, like, uh, able to purchase this Sortex machine. So for that uh, thing, I have come across this APEDA food processing subsidy. Uh, can you please uh, let me know how we say, but I can't say several members but uh, i like uh, came to know that it's completely closed right now can someone ask me how to proceed further uh, let, let me let me clarify uh under the missing gaps the sort of the, uh, the financial assistance for sortex because as apita received a huge number of applications from the rice sectors the uh, the the a large number of rice mills applied for uh, financial assistance sortex machine and uh, so because the, the uh, bulk of applications are already there uh, which are being processed so temporarily we have uh, uh, put on hold uh, applications for uh, sortex machine and also for the uh, applications from some of the states where the applications have already been received in a large number so we will take a view after some time, depending on the availability of funds. Yes, sir. I hope, uh, Anusha, madam, you got the answers for the question. Uh, we have Mr. Jitendra Kumar, who has raised his hand. Jitendra Kumar. Uh, I think uh, some uh, issue with the audio. Uh, we have Mr. Manish Kumar. Mr. Manish. Uh, my question is, uh, first one, sir. So, uh, sir, uh, we are in, uh, we are creating an FPO for uh, livestock owner. And uh, we got this uh, means like exim license also, exim certificate also. And uh, what is the possibility uh, to means like uh, export uh, the uh, meat means like and get support uh, from as an FPO because there's a um, uh, there's a means like bank guarantee and other things. So we can't means like uh, if we can't uh, part of, uh, another fifty percent of our country. So this is mandatory to get a bank loan or we can means like. Uh, Avail loan from any other agency like NBFC, uh, aggregated NBFC or no? Yes, sir. So this question is for Harsha Vardhan? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Mr. Harsha Vardhan, are you there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the bank loan is compulsory uh, to get uh, the subsidies and uh, any uh, funds. Uh, so we have to go for the bank loan. 75% bank loan, you have to make it on the project cost. Okay. Uh, Mr. Manish? Fine. I think uh, uh, we have uh, taken most of the important questions uh, for today's session. So I request uh, all the participants to fill the uh, feedback uh, form that we have shared in the chat box. In fact, the manage uh, CIA is coming up with a lot of programs to support uh, agri startups. So we have uh, invited applications for uh, cohort eight. Uh, the due date for uh, filling the application form also has been extended. So anybody who's looking for uh, financial assistance uh, under a pre seed and seed stage category can apply for the program and uh, we'll definitely uh, help you with uh, mentoring and uh, also try to uh, get you funding. Uh, that is in the form of a grant in aid from the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, Government of India. And also, uh, we have recently uh, launched a national level uh, uh, 
business uh, plan challenge innovation agri innovation business plan challenge by the name manage agri eureka 2022 the applications uh, uh, will be open till 15th of october so anybody is uh, working on uh, any innovative idea related to agriculture and allied sectors can uh, participate in this uh, program and uh, a particular uh, mentoring sessions training programs is scheduled and uh, national level uh, uh, winners will be announced and these winners will be eligible to become uh, part of our uh, rk or after project mentoring and incubation services and also we are launching uh, the next batch of digital marketing uh, for agri startups most of the agri startups uh, are uh, not aware of uh, all the important tools that they can use for marketing their products in order to create a better marketplace and uh, equip them with the uh, latest uh, marketing skills mane cia has taken this initiative uh, we will be having in eminent resource person from the industry who are going to give uh, uh, training specifically on the tools the uh, agripreneurs uh, can uh, make use of in, in order to promote their uh, products and services and also uh, people who have just have a basic idea related to any innovative uh, uh, business proposal related to agriculture and allied sectors they can be uh, part of our pre incubation program even applications are invited for the next batch also so all these details are available in our official uh, website uh, the details have been shared in the chat box and uh, you can follow our all social media channels where you can uh, get more details about the latest uh, events and other updates happening at minus cia uh, i thank all the attendees and also i thank all the speakers who came and uh, spent their valuable time in uh, sharing their valuable knowledge and also uh, details of the industry insights and the progress of the growth and all other things uh, on behalf of uh, manager cia i thank uh, everybody Thank you, Dr. Sudan, sir. And also, I thank on behalf of my chairman, Apita, Dr. Angamuthu, for nominating you. Thank you very much, sir. It is a very delight to hear from you. And we will uh, reach you more to support the startups and other agri partners. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, and also, thank I thank, thank you, Dr. Sarvanan. Thank you. Thank you very much. And all the best wishes to all the participants. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I also thank other two presenters, uh, startups, Dr. Uh, Mr. Kasavardhan and also Mr. Susil. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your experience. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank, thank you. you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.